Uh, it's coffee break. Welcome back. We're Hello. here. I hope you got your favorite beverage of choice. I'm drinking coffee right now. I am not drinking coffee. I'm sorry. I just don't <laughs> feel like having coffee today. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome to the sixth episode. Uh, let's start right off. PlayStation is testing play for uh, before you buy the game. Only in the UK. It's for uh, Death Stranding on the PS5 and Sackboy, A Big Adventure. You get to basically download the game and play like Death Stranding up to six hours before deciding if you want to buy it. That seems like a bad idea. It's kind of weird, isn't it? For, okay, for Death Stranding, I totally get it because it's such a weird game. Like, no one knows how to describe it. And the gameplay is apparently super weird and stuff. Mm -hmm. But why Sackboy? Like, what I've played... You know, I, I know. I, I know what to oh, expect. <laughs> for for Sackboy, it's only five hours. All right. I feel like you could beat Sackboy in five hours. <laughs> Honestly. Based off of the one I've played, like, the one I've played, like, that was not a long game. <laughs> they're, they're fun. Uh, I think they're better when they're uh, more smaller games, not full out. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I just I feel like a demo would be better than, right? than this. <laughs> so instead of making demos, we're just gonna let you play the game. Yeah, that's mm, mm -hmm. kind of weird. That is but weird. They're trying it out. We'll see if it works. I, I don't think so. The concept's too weird to me. Mm -hmm. Um, season two of Marvel's What If has already been written. Really? No. Season one was so bad. It was so boring. <laughs> they're gonna keep going with it. God, I hope they fix it. Because it could be so interesting, but wow, it, it, it boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's it's pretty bad. Make sure every character talks way too fast. <laughs> well, speaking of horrible things with Marvel, Black Widow is now available on Disney Plus. I finally watched it yeah. yesterday, and uh, oh my god, that is the worst MCU movie it I've ever seen. It was so bad. My conversation was more interesting. Yeah, like and, I, it was. I, it wasn't even like. There wasn't even anything. For having so much random action sprinkled throughout, there was so much nothing going on. No character, no development. Just... I just love that no one can hold their accent. <laughs> Could you not have hired a Russian? Could you not have taken a couple more voice training classes? So, theory... Or if they can't do it, just don't do the accent at all. <laughs> theory is ScarJo sued them because of how bad that movie actually was. Mm. Because she knew it wasn't going to be well. It was pretty bad. It was so boring. The cinematography sucked, too. Yeah. And everything's shaky cam now. <laughs> she, like, picked up a box of, like, hairspray or something, and the camera was, like, waving in and out and whatever. I'm like, what is what is this horror vibe for the spy thriller? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the ending is just CGI explosion galore. Mm -hmm. Looks like Michael Bay's wet dream. It's so dumb. Scar Joe not emoting into camera. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, here's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Smash Bros. The final mm -hmm. character has been announced, and it is Sora from the Kingdom of Hearts. Yay! Yay! Now, that is all the Smash Bros. characters. The DLC is done. Yeah, yeah. They said goodbye to the game. They're finished with it. Yeah. I mean, they've been releasing updates for it. It's been three years now. Yeah. Like, damn. <laughs> It has over, what, 90 characters now? Uh, uh, I think it's like 80, 80 something characters. It's like 86, but yeah. Yeah. It has a lot of characters. And, uh, I remember as a kid playing the original going like, I wish there was more characters. Never wanted 86 of them. Yeah. That's, I mean, I really like it when fighting games have huge rosters because I love just like, the random button is so entertaining now. Because when there was only like, you know, 12 for Melee or whatever, it's like, gee, it's going to be the same ones over and over. No, it's so diverse. And I think I like the lineup that they picked. I think they picked good games with good characters to represent well-loved classics and new fan favorites. The only one I'm questionable on is Terry. Because <laughs> I, I don't know that one. <laughs> I feel like that's a ripoff. <laughs> I was like, really? I paid for this? <laughs> Maybe it's bigger in Japan. But, Maybe. But I didn't, I didn't know Terry. Oh. <laughs> um. We know that every Smash Bros. comes with a new generation of Nintendo. Yes. Uh, do you think he's going to make one for whatever's next? I think they're going to be working on uh, Smash Bros. 6. I don't know. And remember I was talking about the Switch 4K dev kits last week? Mm-hmm. Do you think that's what that's yep. going to be? 
I think that's what they're working on. How do you top this? Like, I feel like at this point, all you would need to do is port it. Maybe oh, okay. change the story. So, when they ported Mario Kart 8, mm -hmm. it feels cheap. It does. Like, make a new Mario Kart. Yeah. Seriously. They were, they were supposedly working on years. one. They were supposed to make one with Smash Bros. characters. Yeah, that's why we got, like, Isabelle and Link in. Yep. I don't know. Just do something. Like, it's fun. Add more. The, the fact that 90% of the roster is filled up with the individual Koopalings is such a cheat. But the color variant matters, you know? I mean, I <laughs> like I, I like the fact that they at least went the extra mile to make them different weight classes. You know, Roy and Mort are heavies, while well, Larry and Lemmy are light class. Like, that's something. But that's still mostly just Koopa kids. <laughs> yep. I'm surprised Shy Guy's not playable. Shy Guy is playable. Is he? Yeah. That was recent. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been years since I played that game. It is weird. And, like, that's such a... Like, we're gonna go with Shy Guy, but... I don't know. Bring in, like, a Delfino. Like, from Isle Delfino. Maybe some characters from the Paper Mario franchise? Well, I didn't want Sora. And you wanted Leon. I wanted Leon. But I'm, I get Sora. Sora I... is also, like, well-loved. Everyone... I played... Oh my god, just because Disney puts their name on something doesn't mean it's amazing, okay? <laughs> I played the first Kingdom Hearts. I enjoyed it. It was, you know, uh, for its, it was clunky, mm -hmm. gameplay-wise, but yep. I get it. Uh, I'm a bit bummed that we can't get Goofy and Donald in it. Oh. Because they're kind of the heart of the copy, what I like about Kingdom Hearts. The copyright Hearts. issues would be so annoying. It'd be through the roof, but that's the part I liked about Kingdom Hearts. Was the Disney. Because most of it's just Disney. <laughs> That's <laughs> and then, like, all you're going to talk two about. two Final Fantasy characters. <laughs> yeah. And if we were going to go this Final Fantasy route, I would have put in uh, Noctis. I really... I think they could have done something super cool and creative with Noctis. So Noctis is uh, Final Fantasy XV. Woo! Best he's the one. king. And he's got his three buddies. Mm -hmm. When he's doing his smash attacks, just, just like in the game, you'd summon them to do something, right? Yeah. And his gimmick is, like, he can do a bunch of different weapons that he summons from his ring or something like that. He, like, owns the souls of them, but yeah. It could be similar to Byleth, who has a bunch of weapons, in a sense, mm -hmm. but make it more like you can just swap between a bunch of them at random. Like, I don't know. You could have, there's, there, you could have been His, his ultimate should have been him with his father's ring, and it's just, like, an oblivion. Yeah. It just What's that one everything. move that you were just like spamming? That's the, the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you can just spam it once you get far enough, and it's actually still fun. It it's, doesn't affect everything. It's so satisfying. It <laughs> is, and then it all gets sucked back into your ring, and that's it. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm um, but yeah, Smash Bros is over. We got Sora. It's done. Yep. I'm, was... I'm glad it's finally done. Yeah. But... Three years is a long time. Mhm. Mm um. Next up is Animal Crossing New Horizons, uh, Nintendo Direct coming next week, See, that's October 5th. The, that's funny, because I was thinking about Animal Crossing, because we were like, oh, Smash Bros, three years of updates. The only thing they've had longer for updates has been Animal Crossing, which they had been regular updating since the one back on the DS. It's only a year old. But the one on the DS was like f five years old. And they were still supporting They were, yeah, every season, updated. Get new something, new something. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. I uh, I bet this will be fun. I, I they teased Brewster in the last time when they mentioned it. So well, I don't know what else they could bring into. You're the Animal Crossing expert. I can't. I it's a tax simulator. I'm not gonna do that. I think they do need to add something because I started playing around Easter. And then, you know, a year passed, and I got back to Easter, and it was the same things happening. And I was like, oh, that's boring. <laughs> so I think they need to do something a bit more creative, kind of regularly. Whether it's adding more things or changing some things up, I don't know. I hope this can help with that, because it's just another Animal Crossing Halloween where Jack asks you to give candy and... It's the same thing we've had for years. <laughs> but arguably, is that not what we do when we celebrate all this? I guess so. Yeah, it does have a sense of tradition, but I wish the dialogue would change. At oh. least it's like... It's literally just the same thing over and over again. It depends on the personality of your villager, but yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, 
Anyways, the seventh film to the Transformers franchise. I know, I can't even believe what? it. They no. snuck this one under. <laughs> Transformers Rise of the Beasts. It is currently filming. It's due for theaters June 24th of 2022. It will be directed by Creep 2's uh, Stephen Capel... Capel? Capel? Capel Jr. Hmm. Um, it will be set seven years past the events of Bumblebee. So there's not going to be... There's going to be no Marky Mark in it? No. We're not going to get Shia LaBeouf? No. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> those, those times are done. Man. It, it will have uh, Maximals, Predacons, and Terracons. I think what they're doing is they're adapting Beast Wars. Okay, I can get into that. But I don't know. I have no faith. I just, Bumblebee was apparently good, but I don't know. I, there, there's a bad taste in my mouth when it comes to Transformers. <laughs> Bumblebee was fun. John Cena helps. It's John. I was going to bring up John he's, Cena. He's st he shines in every movie he's in. <laughs> yeah, I got a little man crush for uh, John Cena now. He can't blame you, you know? Dude, we watched that firefighter movie. Yeah. Uh, and it was good. It was. It was fine. <laughs> it's a horrible movie. It was, I loved it. It was bad. I just love John Cena. But he was fun in it. <laughs> just those arms. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I hope it's good. I like Transformers. I hope it's good. I would rather be wrong and have it be It's kind of weird that they would just secretly do this one. There yeah. was no huge announcement for it. Maybe because they were afraid of this exact conversation of people being like, I don't know, it probably won't be any good. <laughs> yeah. Well, more toys, right? Yeah. So, here's a weird thing, and I lost this article, but I still want to bring this up, because maybe some of the listeners here, you guys can help me with this one. Um... I was curious about Sony and their handheld consoles, mm. the PSP and the PS Vita. I have owned both of them. I enjoyed them, and I thought what they were doing with them was really cool. Yeah. It's a step above what Nintendo was. Mm -hmm. Now Nintendo has the Switch, and it's like... I think, I think Sony could do something pretty impressive. So I found this website, and of course I lost it, but what I was reading is somebody was digging through the finances of Sony, and this is what they found. Now, when this was posted was before the PS5 was released, but they said that in 2020, the PlayStation 5 will be released. Okay. That happened. That's true. Mm hmm Now, what they said is in 2023, there's going to be a PlayStation 5 portable. So I'd be into that, you know? The power of a PlayStation 5 in your hand. But, like, portable? That's the thing. I love the portability. What's the point of my PlayStation, then? Why didn't they just go with that? It'd probably be weaker, you know? Yeah. And it'd probably have some exclusive games on it, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that's... Sackboy? I just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Death Stranding Jr. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love portable things, because, like, so often you'll be watching some crappy movie, and I'll just be... Like, while you were watching Black Widow, I was just playing through Deltarune. And, you know, it's just, I, that's why I love the portability of it, is I can do multiple things at the same time, and we can both be entertaining ourselves in some way. Yeah. Um. Also, if it's portable, I would, hope, I would hope it would be compatible with the PlayStation, so then we can do, like, multiplayer games that That's way. what they were using the Vita for. You could play your PlayStation using your Vita. It was nice. feeding it directly. Cool. And I think this is... It's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, the last thing this article did bring up is that in 2026, the PlayStation 6 will be released. Yeah, I don't know about that. The PlayStation 6 has been done, like, 2019 is when they finished it. But but then why? Why bother with the 5 if you have the 6 ready? That sounds stupid. I That's the one thing I don't it was, believe. It was weird because that person was talking about the PlayStation 7. Also, well, 6 years? And it's like, that's so far ahead. That doesn't seem like enough time. For only six years per console? I don't know. I don't know. Because, well, like, how long was the PlayStation 4 around for? It was released 2013, 2014. So. That's the, six years. That is six years, huh? But I don't know. Because I know the PlayStation 3 lasted way longer than the PlayStation 4. So, what is that, the 8th gen? Is it? 
It's so hard to remember that they're not lined up with the numbers yeah, on PlayStation. The, <laughs> the Nintendo Wii, the PlayStation 3, and the Xbox 360, yeah, had the longest shelf life. Mm-hmm. I remember, I remember it was to the point where I was like, are we going to make new consoles? <laughs> I thought it was crazy that it, because there's a shortage on consoles, Sony was like, hey, uh, we're going to stop making the PS3 so we can focus on the 5. And it's like, this should have already happened. Like, why are you still making them? Yeah. And then they finally stopped making the 4. Oh, they have? Yeah. Those are done. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. The PS4 is good, but God, I've destroyed two of them. They're loud motherfuckers. They are. They're so loud. They're screaming at you. It's not like a rocket ship taking off in our... I always knew whenever you turn on the PlayStation. Not by the beep, but by the... Yeah. <laughs> like it's revving up. Um, yeah, so again, I lost this article... Maybe I can find it, but... Take this with a green assault, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, I thought it was just interesting. Just yeah, another even... part of the rumor mill. <laughs> yeah. I'd be totally down for a PS5 portable, though. Yeah, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the rumor mill, we're going to talk about Rockstar Games. Ooh. So Rockstar has finally taken down their website for an old uh, Cold War thriller espionage project called Agent. Oh. So they're giving up on it? Yeah, they've completely shut that thing down. About time, guys. <laughs> but they, they announced it back in 2009. That sucks. But, uh, you know, Rockstar takes a long time. They take way too long. With all their ga The fact that they have three... No, wait, five. Wait. How many... Fuck. Hold on. <laughs> how many Red Deads are there? There's three. three. Yeah. And then they have five for Grand Theft Auto. And those Plus, are their... I don't know. There's spinoffs, too. Yeah, there are those spinoffs. I don't know. Those are the only two real... So, speaking of Grand Theft Auto, uh -huh. Rockstar is uh, rumored, and we've seen almost everything except for an announcement, for a remake of GTA 3, San Andreas, and Vice City. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, why not just make six? Why remake old You, you know, I was thinking about that, too, because we brought this up before, that we've seen footage of six at Best Buy that one time. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Uh, so why are they doing remakes? Did we, like, fall into a fever dream? I are know. we in another dimension? There was a glitch in the Matrix and we found it. <laughs> it just happens to be in Best Buy. No, I don't know. I, 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 I don't see the point of remastering. It's because, especially, those games aren't too old, you know? And they're not too different gameplay-wise than what you can already get from Grand Theft Auto V or You 4. could do more in five. Yeah, so I don't see what's the point of drudging them back up. Supposedly, they don't want to work on any new IPs. I think they should, because they're only they only have the two. <laughs> yeah, they're they're taking a lot of flack right now. A lot of people are mad at them. Come on, Rockstar. They used to be the top, so. Well, you have to stay on but top by so making was, things. <laughs> so is Activision and Blizzard, and look at that problem. Yeah. Mm. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Mike Flanagan and Netflix agree to make another series. Woo! This one will be based on. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. Woo! And eight other stories. I don't know much more. And eight, uh, wait, it's a, what? <laughs> and eight other stories? I don't know if he's going to tell the story of The Fall of the House of Usher and then have, like, so, the Raven show up. Yeah, so is it, uh, it going to be, like, one full long series that kind of stitches all the stories together? Uh, the, or is it going to be each episode is an anthology See, the way situation? it was written, I started to get that impression. Hmm. That's been done before, though. It has. Also, some of the stories are And that aren't was a enough. John John Cusack movie, and it was bad. Damn. It is horrible. If you can find it, relish it, because it's trash. I think it would be more fun if you just stitched them all together somehow. Maybe. I'd just rather have him just tell the stories. Yeah. He can do it. It's in his wheelhouse. I mean, either way it would work. That's fun. Mike Flanagan could do it. Also kind of weird that he's going to do that, but not make it a haunting of. Well... I don't see why he would have to, because the other ones had the those haunting names. of the House of Usher. No. <laughs> yeah, come on. That's the whole point. Was that it fell? Yeah, the, at the end it falls. Yeah. It, it wasn't that, that's spoilers. Well, it, it, it's it's in the name. <laughs> it also wasn't haunted. It was. There was no hauntings in Usher. I'm gonna be honest. I fell asleep on that one. You never read it. Nope. That's great. That's a good one. Okay. Uh. You gotta get the right person to tell it to you. <laughs> I have all his work. I've never read it. 
it's listen it's 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 a bit like eating taffy it's just, it's thick it's hard to get through i like taffy i like taffy too but not all the time so that will be uh his recent one mike flanagan's recent one which came out this month or last month was uh midnight mass midnight mass Woo! which we will talk about in depth at the end of this yeah uh because we want to mm-hmm the next one is called Midnight Club, which is based on a book. Oh, there's going to be one between Midnight Mass and Fall of House of Usher? Yeah, Midnight Club. Ah. And then the next year will be the Fall of the House of Usher. Well, when is this one happening? This We're not going to see this till like, 2023. Oh. I know, we're that far ahead. Damn. <laughs> um, Guess I'll just sit here and wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Sony's animated sequel, Hotel Transylvania 4, Transformia... Transformania. Transformania, whatever. This one looks so dumb. <laughs> they looked all dumb. Anyway, <laughs> instead of releasing it in theaters, they've planned to release it on Amazon Prime. That makes sense, because everyone looked at it and said, no, that looks really bad. Even like, like people who liked the originals said, this looks bad. It's not even Adam Sandler coming back. Yeah, it's, uh... No. Huh? He's not voicing Dracula. It's, uh... Brian Hull, who's a voice actor, who's just mimicking Adam Sandler. Oh. Yeah. Oh, even Adam left? Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. It's so bad. It looks so dumb. They just, they, they, <coughs> they went so bad with character design. It's so bad. I would love to dissect how awful the character design went for this one. <laughs> well, you remember the thing about Tropic Thunder, you never go all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When well, you do that, you <laughs> get horrible things. Now, I brought up why Sony... Oh, well, God, that Sony is going to release this straight to Prime, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, they were going to release Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City on Netflix. Yes. And now they've taken that away and said it's exclusively in theaters. Yeah. I wonder if it's because they expect... They it's think they're going to make money better. on it. Yeah. So the trailer finally dropped. Yeah. Let's talk about this okay, finally. Okay, go ahead. Let's talk about it. No, you you start, because <laughs> you've, been, you've been bubbling on the side of you for the last oh, couple of days. <laughs> oh. God. Um, that song, man. So unnecessary. I hate it. <laughs> Why? This, it's such a stupid thing. And I think Suicide Squad started it. The original one. No, they've been doing this for a while, but, taking old but, songs and remaking them, but, but they didn't even remake it. But Suicide Squad, like, kind of popularized it. This, I, why would you, why for non-blondes? Why the He-Man meme song? You're right. Out of all songs, it doesn't, but there's so many better. It didn't help <laughs> any of those action scenes. No. It just made it look like a stupid fucking, like, rom-com that just happens to be a little bloody. It really feels like they wanted a different song and then just had to settle for whatever they could get. Now, because I'm, they're taking two games and shoving them together. That's the other thing I'm nervous this, about. This is not the answer. Did we talk about this last week on the last podcast? I don't think so. Okay. When you do that, think about it. You're taking here two games. Mm -hmm. Two games that, I mean, if you play them as fast as you can, you beat them in three hours. That's six hours of content. Yeah. You're going to shove that together in and one. then cut it down to two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's what I'm going to call the uh, series of unfortunate events syndrome. So, though, not the Netflix one. Yeah, that The Netflix one, each episode dedicates to a book. The original movie with Jim Carrey <laughs> where it's because the thing is you're taking because each game has a story structure there's a beginning a rising action a climax a resolution but now you're having to stitch together two different beginnings rising actions climaxes resolutions and you're gonna make a Frankenstein product this way there unless unless the events from one are like some sort of prelude some sort of precursor that's not what I got. But I don't know. I don't know. So, okay. <laughs> what I know, and if you've played the games, is that Chris and Claire do not meet before. Yeah. When Chris goes out to Arkley Mountains, where he goes to the Spencer Estate, mm -hmm. right? Claire comes to look for him because he's been missing. Yes. That's the whole point. But she never finds him. No. She runs into Leon. Yeah. And then they go through the underground tunnel. 
Yeah, the, the, these are completely different plots in completely different places of the world yeah. with completely different characters. So, not only have they screwed up the timeline, uh, Leon just looks bad. When we saw him up close, he just looks like he hasn't had a haircut. I don't mind the, the actor's appearance, although appearance-wise, he does look way No, he more, looks unshaved. He looks like Carlos. Yeah. He would have been a great Carlos, just based off oh, his physical oh, appearance. Okay. <laughs> so... Here's another issue. Resident Evil 3 takes place before the events of Resident Evil 2. Yeah, so So we're... why didn't you do that? Uh, man, who yeah. knows? <laughs> yeah, no, it was dumb. I, um... Uh, Birkin? I Are like... You... I like that actor. I think that's a great choice for Birkin's actor. I don't remember his name. He's Damien Dark. Uh, he was one of the Howling Commandos. <laughs> He's in a lot of things randomly. <laughs> he does a lot of beauty roll stuff. He's in Sonic. He is in Sonic. <laughs> Where Jim Carrey ashamed him. Yeah, yeah. It's great. I love it. Um, I think he's going to make a great Birkin, but I I don't want to judge... Neil McDonald. Nice. That's his name. Nice. I don't want to judge Leon based solely on his appearance, because it can be hard finding someone who plays the role right and looks exactly how you want. Um, and you know what else killed me? Hmm. You see Claire hand him the vest. No. <laughs> That's uh, the dying black cop that he saves. Mm -hmm. I, I what forgot that act. Name? I forgot that character's name, but he's the one who gives him all that stuff. Yeah, I don't. And he says, "Welcome to the force, rookie." I mean, that's <laughs> that's part of the damn story. Man, I don't know. I, I'm, I my biggest worry is because it's, it's it seems to me that Claire is gonna be our our main protagonist. She's yeah, our center focus. We barely saw which, Jill. Which makes sense. You know, I didn't even realize I was Jill at first. I was, I, it was like, I don't even remember, but it was like sitting there in bed late at night. I was like, wait a minute, was that Jill? Just out of nowhere. <laughs> also, Wesker's not wearing his glasses. Oh, I don't, I don't mind that. It's to hide his eyes. But, uh... He I'm, has red eyes. You gotta jazz it up somehow. Do something a bit different. Uh, Tom Hopper as Wesker is cool. I do like that. That's the thing. I like, also, I like Tom, most casting choices. Tom is so much bigger than uh, uh, Robbie. Mm hmm. And Robbie's a big guy. Robbie is big. I, I mean, really like Robbie Emil as Chris. Yeah, no, that, that makes was perfect. perfect sense. I, also, I had, remember I came up with that one idea a long time ago. Yeah. I was like, if I could get one of the Emils to play Leon, mm -hmm. it would be the perfect casting. But they did tr Chris. And it still works. It still works. It's still perfect. And uh, uh, he could definitely nail Chris's, like, big, dumb, himbo type yeah. of personality. Oh, he's a good actor. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, it makes sense for uh, Claire to be our, like, main character, because she's the only one who does have relations to both sides of the story, with Chris being her brother. Yeah. But I'm, I'm worried it's going to be this thing, and I hate it when movies do this where they dumb down all of the male characters to push the look how big and strong our female hero is it's like she's a badass already yeah we don't need to make our male characters stupid to make her a badass because she already is a badass yeah her and jill are i mean they made history yeah yeah <laughs> um the zombies look like zombies the cerberus looks like a cerberus the, uh, the liquor looks like a liquor i was impressed birkin looks so i it, you can catch him yeah. you can catch him in his full form and i did tw uh tweet that yeah because i i saw it and i caught him and when i was looking at him he does not look right there's something about the cg the cg isn't fantastic no like even the cerberus looks a little like a little fake yeah oh, oh, okay <laughs> uh there's there's that one zombie who's got like a weird like white face and she's like yeah, I, she writes itchy tasty and then breaks through and attacks J claire i don't know what that's about that's... why why are we focusing on that that i don't know that seems weird i also don't know when this could take place because it's not in it's not in the game wait we didn't see sherry did we in this trailer oh sherry's in there she is in it she is she... he's expert birkin uh Birkin's daughter is Sherry. He's been experimenting with her, and it... Oh, my God. Are they going to do that plot line? Uh, they should. That's the plot. Where he wants to... Uh, well, maybe not. No. <laughs> no, not that one. No, not that plot line. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, there's something very strange about the G-Virus, and it's incestuous. It's really gross. Uh, no, 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 bad, bad, bad. Don't do that. <laughs> we don't need to do that. I mean, that. even when the animated movies tackled it, I was like, it's still creepy. It's just... I mean, I get it, because that's the... That's, that'll fucking push the horror <laughs> real quick yeah um 
Well, but I don't, I don't remember seeing someone, like an actress. For she's sure. laying on the table. So we don't get a good look at her. Yeah, she's not moving. She's just laying there, yeah. and it's just kind of plugging tubes into her. All right. Okay. I feel like we should have focused more on her, but yeah, she's kind of a major part of that story. But uh, we're we're, we're also, addressing we a lot Ada? of things. I don't think so. But she's I definitely don't think they're gonna spoil Ada in the trailer. You know. <laughs> No, everyone knows about Ada. I don't know. I, I don't know. Do we know who's playing her? Do we have a cast list yet? Oh, we do. I just don't have it here. That's okay. I'll look it up later. Yeah, we'll do it next time. <laughs> I do like the cast. The only one I'm a little nervous on is Leon, because I don't know that actor. But I'm hoping they picked him for a good reason. You know? <laughs> everyone who plays Leon in the games mm -hmm. has... <sighs> Just only benefited from playing him. Yeah, fantastic. This uh, Nick, the latest voice actor for yeah. Leon, fantastic. He's he's so into it. He cosplays. I know, him. and he's cute. <laughs> That's so adorable. It is. <laughs> oh, and he already kind of looks like him because they modeled him after him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the guy before him, Matthew Mercer. Yep, 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 yep. Look at his career. Fantastic. Now he he owns a whole company. <laughs> And it's only because he did Leon a few times. That's what really spiked him up. It was Leon, Crom, and Alvin that really just boosted his career. Yeah. So everyone was playing those games and they all saw him. Mm -hmm. um, the other guy who played Leon, I haven't seen him in a while, but I think he's just old. I don't, yeah, he might just be retired. He was already old when he played Leon in Resident Evil 4. This is the thing with the old, old games and the voice actors back then. They weren't really... They weren't unionized. Yeah, they weren't sticking around for... Well, Matthew Mercer. Uh, well, that was another thing. <laughs> yeah, he led that charge. With the union That's also why he doesn't voice Leon. Yeah. <laughs> they had a big disagreement. Things happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm excited. It comes out November still, 24th, just in time for Thanksgiving. Nice. I know what you're thinking. Turkeys, football, beer, Resident Evil. Yeah, that's a what a combo. <laughs> Although uh, I don't like turkey very much. Could be traded out for fried chicken. That's what we've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like turkey. Turkey's gross. Tur turkeys are vicious. Wow. <laughs> Fucking little monsters. Oh my god. They, they are so aggressive. They're called foul for They're a reason. They're smelly little... God. They're, uh, yeah. Hey, I've had a turkey corner me and my siblings. Mm -hmm. In a forest. Yeah. <laughs> that is scary, man. <laughs> They're, when you're between a turkey trying to birds. attack, yeah, I don't want to get bitten by that thing. They have no fear either. They're re they're ready to go. Dude, I don't even know what oh, that guy's problem was. Yeah, and his claws. Curled up claws. Yeah. Ugh. Ah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm traumatized. They, and they don't even taste good. That's they don't. the thing. They're always dry. Yep. And gross. <laughs> so I know I said Resident Evil will be on Netflix. It will be in theaters. Yes. They just did that and didn't fucking tell anyone. <laughs> no, they did right there in the end of that trailer. Yeah, pay attention. <laughs> Exclusively, they, they put that in there. It was a little ha ha ha. <laughs> so, uh, HBO Max's new series, House of the Dragon, trailer dropped. Oh yeah, that this is the went prequel to Game under of the radar. <laughs> I don't think anyone's expecting it, and the way Game of Thrones ended. I don't know. I don't think the public's very happy. I don't know. I, also, this trailer told us nothing. No. It didn't even really tell us the cast. <laughs> I'm going to watch it because it still looks good. Also, yeah, we need and something. There's I, nothing to watch right now. <laughs> there's a lack of content. Um, I like I like the Targaryens, and just to get to experience more with them, yeah. it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. Um, this is based on the book Fire and Blood, and the series will be created by George R. R. Martin and Ryan J. Condal. So wait, not the two guys who worked on... Yeah, I was going to bring that up. So it's going to be 10 episode series for now. They didn't even do a pilot. They said straight up, give us 10 episodes. Alright. Well... So I was like, wow, you're doubling down on this. So the guys who are absent from creating this, who created Game of Thrones, is David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. What are they doing? What have they been up to? They're doing that... Remember, I looked it up. Uh, they're doing a Netflix movie about... It's called The Kings of Metal. And oh. it's a high school band yeah. who's going to win by playing metal. It's like, it's that's just School of Rock. <laughs> that's just Jack Black's School of Rock. <laughs> you know, I, I don't like these musicals. I do like musicals. I love music. Yeah, we watched that, um, we watched Muppets' Haunted Mansion. Yeah, that was fun. And they had music. That was a fun old, like, the music was I didn't was expect a great... Ray Arnett to I... be the... 
I fucking didn't, key at the end. Yeah, I didn't expect Will Arnett at I, all. I thought it was just a fun <laughs> guest cameo. Like, it, he was, like, also, like, the picture on Disney Plus didn't have Will Arnett, and then when you clicked on it, it still didn't have Will Arnett. It yeah. had John Stamos <laughs> with <Yeah>. Pepe. <laughs> and then when he opens the door, you're just like, uh, okay. It's like, oh, all right, Will well, Arnett's in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Will. <laughs> um... Yeah, so they're working on this horrible metal... Th- it just sounds stupid. I can't. And stop attacking the things that I love. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, okay, so House of the Dragon. We're gonna check it out. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fun. I mean, if it sucks, it sucks, right? But, but at least we gave it a shot. Yeah, gotta at least try. God, we didn't watch Game of Thrones till what, season 7? Yeah, we were, um, when it... We were one season... By the time we watched it, it was one season away from finishing. So we didn't have to sit around and wait like all that you did. <laughs> no, what I did to get us to the last season was made us watch season one again. Yes, I remember that, yeah. That's still a good season. It is. It's a whole, the whole thing was good until that last season. Last season was fine. Not great. They should have been two seasons. They should have expanded that out. They should They could have. You can't put that many stories into it. You know, fighting the, the fight in Winterfell... Yeah. And then having, uh... Honestly, that could have Daenerys. been one whole season in and of itself. Just that final yep. fight. That's a long night. Mm-hmm. Well, wasn't that what it's called? The long night? Was it? <laughs> I feel like, yeah. <laughs> it, it's long. I mean, it feels like three hours. And then the resolution could have been a whole episode in itself as well. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the ending's kind of weird. But yet you're like, oh, I guess I saw it coming. Yeah, it's just like, and that, that's it. There we go. That's the end. <laughs> um, okay, so... What was released this week in theaters is James Bond, the final outing of Daniel Craig as 007. Oh yeah, I wrote something really stupid here. Um, God. You don't need to read it if you want to. Yeah, no, it's dead. Don't don't (laughs) even worry. But hey, finally it's over. Um, I hope it's a good film. I know people are going out to see it, which is awesome that people are going back to the movie theaters. Yes. Um, We are still not out of this pandemic. Get vaccinated. Wear a mask. Be safe. Yeah, just be safe. Be smart. Be safe and smart. (laughs) Okay. Last week, I started off super hard against Boba Fett. Yes. And I'm not apologizing. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of you have responded to me about Star Wars, and I loved it. I love talking to you guys about Star Wars. I really made my day. Yay! And um, one thing I wanted to point out, because there's so much hate towards the prequel trilogy and the sequel trilogy, mm-hmm. but no one's ever taken the time to take a shit on the original trilogy. Those three suck. Four, <laughs> through, four five, and six suck. <laughs> when, when I started in film school and they start breaking down films for you and you start to see these things, mm-hmm. and Star Wars is always brought up. Star Wars it's and constantly, Empire. Constantly talked about They're They're in, in every school. fucking book. Every single teacher talked about Star Wars in some degree. And so what I did is I went home and I watched episode four. And now I had seen it multiple times. I grew up with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. But when I finally watched it again, it is such a dumb movie. It's slow and boring and the effects aren't even that good. <laughs> I don't know why they keep going back and fucking with it. I, even I, those effects look horrible. <laughs> when R2's like hiding, but he wasn't really hiding, so they went back and CGI these fake rocks around him. Yeah. Oh, oh so good. So fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, the stars, the, 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 the lightsaber battles between uh, Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right? Mm-hmm. It happens halfway through the movie. Such a... It's the worst fight it's, in yeah. all of the... Like it's kind of like... In all thing. of it. Also, how could you even... Like, how could you even... When there's that Obi-Wan versus General Grievous fight. Which is like, probably the best fight in any of those movies. And you're gonna tell me that the preview trilogy wasn't good? <laughs> so, so at the end of the, the prequel trilogy... Anakin and Obi-Wan get into their fight. Fantastic, as well. The music's just amazing. Yes. But that fight is still the most badass fight to date. Also, like, they use the whole environment in so many interesting ways. Oh, it's amazing. They go from, like, small, cramped rooms to jumps. lava and Joe you know, doing, like, all kinds of crazy things and still I, trying to kill each other. I love the scene where they're, like, in the control panel room right Mm -hmm. and they start swinging their lightsabers around and they're not hitting each other and what's going on there is the it's so cool because they actually have the same fighting style is they're looking for an opening 
but they're not because they're so evenly up. matched. Yeah. yeah, they're literally just <laughs> looking for a spot. But when you watch it, you just see these guys twirling lights around. But yeah, really, yeah, yeah. they're they're looking to hit each it's other hard. It's so smart. It's, it's a smart. It's good. It's smart. Now, episode five, um, overhyped. Yeah. And it's one thing that I'll praise it for is the dark ending. Yes, it is. It's weird. Like before Luke then, is defeated. there was no real story where, you know, it ends with the heroes failing. Yeah, it was, oh, Han Solo is taken away. He gets trapped by in Boba Fett. Yep, yep. Always Boba Fett. Still God. doing the same characters over and over and over again. <laughs> and then, uh, Episode Six. When you built a Death Star, yeah, and it didn't work. What's the most evilest thing to do next? Build a fucking another one. <laughs> Get used to this thought because it's gonna come back. Keep doing it. <laughs> um, you know, it's bound to work this time. <laughs> my favorite one is six. Uh, of those first. Yeah, it's just my sick day kind of movie. That's the one I remember the least. I I can't remember. Okay. And other than the final fight with uh, Luke and Vader, I don't remember so the interesting thing about, any of it <laughs> about that uh when you're studying star wars the jedis wear earth tones yes and the sith wear black yes it's uh, black and red it's a it's an early concept for color theory as yep. well yeah when luke shows up in episode six he's wearing black he's wearing black he was never a good guy he's also force choking those pig guards yeah I, he's Luke's not a good character. No, he's a f really <laughs> evil person. It makes sense why he would show up in The Mandalorian and kind of just steal Groku and run away. Yeah. Because he is a bad guy. He does try to kill his own nephew. Yeah, like, like, when the world is going to shit, his plan was to run away and pretend like n none of it affects him in mm -hmm. any way. Hiding around. He's a whiny little Pluto. bitch. Yeah, he's never he's been a good character. He's always been a whiny. Even when he's a fucking kid mm -hmm. on Tatooine, he whines more than Anakin. I, Anakin was happy. Oh my god, Anakin was so excited to do anything. And Luke was like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want blue milk. I don't want to do it. No, I want to go to the academy, <laughs> not do the harvest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know why we keep trudging up the fucking the Scott, illustrious Skywalker family. It's like that guy sucked. There's nothing illustrious about it. You had a your grandpa was like an evil mega dictator of the world, and then your dad was just this. No, not his dad. Uncle. <laughs> uncle? It would be uncle. Yeah. Wait, what are you saying? I'm talking about Kylo Ren and oh, his like okay. lineage. And like, oh. Okay. Yeah, little. <laughs> Little baby, little angry baby. It's like, I have a lot to live up to. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> you literally, you could be just like a barista at Starbucks and you'd be a better person than either Anakin or Luke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so the prequel trilogy, episode one. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. The Gungans are the worst part. They, they are. They're so annoying. They really are. Um, but that's the only one they're really in. You know, after mm. episode one... There's a reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy who voices Jar Jar has apologized for doing that. Yeah. George Lucas apologized for even making the character. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's easy to forgive the Gungans, because we do get Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn. So yeah, that's no. fantastic. And we get pod racing. <laughs> pod racing is awesome. Uh, Darth Maul, that mm -hmm. fight at the end. Yeah. That's a fun fight. Yeah. That was never done before. Yeah. And the... It's all happening at once. And then episode two. Mm -hmm. uh, the older I get, the more I've liked episode two. I like. I do enjoy the political element of it. And that's that's how old we are. As a kid, <laughs> it's boring. It is. <laughs> but you start to get really interested in that Galactic Senate. Also, you know, I just love Ewan McGregor. So anytime he does anything, it's great. I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah. um, Anakin's okay. He's, he's fine. He's young. It's, just, it's a lot of like, oh, it, and it makes sense that we spent an entire movie building it up. But like, it's it's mostly just, woo, whippee. It's me and my girlfriend falling in love and having a good time. And it's like, okay, I get that this was important for the climax of the story arc, but oof, boring. <laughs> I think the most important part of that movie is the ending where Anakin does go to fight Dooku. Because mm -hmm. Anakin's dual wielding. Yeah. Two lightsabers. We've never seen that before. Yeah, shit happened. <laughs> he beat up uh, Obi-Wan 
and he's mad at him, so he's trying to hit him as hard as he can, and he's still not good. That's why he loses that fight. Mm -hmm. He loses his arm, right? Yeah. And then Yoda comes in and saves them. Yeah. Uh, then episode three. Episode three is my favorite episode. Fantastic. It's my favorite it's episode. It's the climax. It's the best. It's why did we start with four when three? Yeah. Three was so good. And we're going to sit here and trudge through four. <laughs> you uh -oh. all going to talk about four when three is right there? <laughs> so, now seven. Okay? Oh, uh, I enjoyed it. I, 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 it's just nostalgia. Yeah, but... It's... Because if you didn't succeed with two Death Stars... What if... We built a whole fucking planet. Yeah! Death Planet! <laughs> yeah! Star Killer. Oh, let's put a cute name to remind them of a dead franchise we purposely murdered. Yeah, yep, 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 Thanks. yep, yep. Thanks, Disney. Thanks, Disney. <laughs> it's just... It, it. I went to the theaters to watch Seven, and I did have fun with it. But then I... I Kylo Ren was my favorite part. And then I just saw this thing. I was like, it's just literally the same exact story, beat for beat. You, you know what I really hate about that movie? Is what they did with Finn. Yeah. I don't hate Finn or Poe. That's the thing. I love them. I wish we focused a lot more on them. Yeah. They because they been do our... a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. And Finn, twice in that movie, is holding that lightsaber. Yeah. And, and I'm like, okay, come on, you're a Jedi, we're right? We're clearly Jedi. building it up to this, and now it's her, the annoying one who doesn't emote. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna eat a pickle. The thing I really didn't like about that movie was that one random old bitch had Luke's lightsaber. Mm -hmm. It's like, where the fuck did this plot convenience drop in from? <laughs> Luke lost that lightsaber in episode five. So they found it somewhere there. She just found it. Well, she happened to have it. <laughs> um, eight. So bad. Without so good. a doubt. It is the worst oh, one. It's the best one. I hate it. It's so... Every single conflict could have been easily avoidable. If Leia just talked and explained her very basic plan, then Poe would not have gone off and done his stupid mission, and they all wouldn't have been killed in, in the long run. It would have been so... If she just explained what she was... Because in the beginning, she was like, I can't tell you, Poe. It's a bit, 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 bit. And then he does this whole thing, and then she's like, oh, well, listen, we were just planning a secret surprise party. It's like, you just, just say it. <laughs> just I, talk to each other. I like that, that Luke is like that that would be him he is a whiny little bitch and he would run away and hide and just kind of sit there and grieve in his own shit it does make sense and yeah he is gross he's the, gross, the yeah. milk scene is just nasty it's, 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 who wanted to who thought that was a good idea to film it's just dumb <laughs> anyways uh when he fights kyler at the end that's really cool like, yeah it's neat the white and the red is cool looking but with that whole planet that salt oh, planet oh, okay yeah <laughs> But I don't know. It, I was just thinking of how he's a force ghost. Oh, uh, yeah. True. Nah, I don't, I don't like it. It was boring. Also, the entire subplot about Finn and uh, Rose. Th that goes nowhere. Running around being like, we're going to save we're the gonna horses. save the nature animals. And by doing it, we just helped like a handful of maybe seven creatures. We did it. All animal abuse is gone in the nature world. <laughs> but they left the kids lives. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Which we never focus on ever again. Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then episode nine. Yeah. That's horrible. This is boring. That's horrible. I don't know why it's like two and a half hours long when nothing happens. We finally see the cis planet, Exegol. Mm-hmm. And we do nothing. Need it. Yeah, we go to one building in the middle of it. <laughs> we couldn't think of any other greater villain than to rehash then just Palpatine. just Palpatine again. That's the that's the same thing we were talking about last time. It's just Boba Fett again. Palpatine again. Yeah, Tatooine the original? again. Jabba the Hutt again. We're just why do we gotta continually trudge up the same concepts? It's a whole galaxy of in, endless interesting worlds of creativity. The only thing limited limiting you is your own imagination, and we're just doing the same things over and over again. <laughs> so, uh. What I wanted to talk about is defending each of these trilogies. Mm -hmm. We don't like the original trilogy because that came out back in the 80s. Yeah, it's out. the effects are outdated. The story arcs are outdated. Our parents grew up with that, so they love Luke and yeah. Han and Leia. All about it. <laughs> that's, that's their guys. We grew up with Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme. Yeah. We care about them. Yeah, those are my favorites. 
Now, the next generation, they have Ray, Finn, and Poe. Yeah. And when they grow up, they're going to come and defend them. Mm-hmm. They're going to think our gonna, stories were updated. There's rumors of another trilogy being made. Honestly, I was thinking about it. I'm down for it. But I hope they do something creative. Get away from the from the Palpatines and the Skywalkers. Just do your own new, unique story. I think you could do something fun. Yeah. I, I don't know where they could go. I would just do something else. Yeah, just don't do the same thing again. Um, but yeah, when you have this many people and it's such a phenomenal event. And it is very generational. Yeah. Like it was the 70s so, and then it was the 2000s and then it was the 20s. <laughs> so just because you dislike that Star Wars doesn't mean it's a bad one. Yeah. People do like them. They care about them. Mm-hmm. And try not to shit on their generation too much. I mean... <laughs> Like, y'all can have, we can all have our own opinions. That's the thing about opinions. Just understand that, you know, opinions can be different from each other. Yeah. And sometimes you can explain yourself as best you can and you'll still disagree, and that's fine. Because sometimes it's just how it goes. <laughs> okay, and then now one more argument. I've made this about the rebels. I hate the rebels. <laughs> they are terrorists. They're murderers. You jump at every opportunity to say this. <laughs> this is, I believe in the Empire. They do a lot of shitty things. <laughs> they kill so many people. They destroy things. It's the thing in Clerks that you were talking about. So in Clerks, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it. Great. Great movie. There's there's a, the main character is Dante. Yeah. And then next door in the video store is his buddy, Randall. Yeah. And Randall talks about how... Uh, everyone on the Death Star would be subcontracted and not actually work for the Empire. Yeah. They'd be working for them through a contract. And then you have these rebels who come in and just kill them. Yeah. Just blow them all up. They like, didn't stop to think about all the people working on the like Death Star. Like all the random janitors who are working yeah. on the Death Star? All dead. They not... I mean, and especially with... If you're going to present, uh, you know, like Darth Vader as a mega overlord dictator... A lot of people just follow the dictator so they don't get killed. And I've, you're going to swoop in and kill them just for trying to survive? <laughs> I've said this. Have you ever seen Darth Vader strike an unarmed civilian? I can't think of any. Nope. Nah. When he kills you, it was always because you're aggressing on him. It was, yeah, it was always a rebel uh, faction who were already attacking his forces. Yeah. Or he, was all, or he just attacked his own general. That was the only thing. That famous yeah. like force choke scene. Yeah. That's his own general. Like, he doesn't attack civilians. <laughs> I do not like Rogue One. No. I feel like it's a movie that only sponsors terrorism. It's, uh, I didn't like, like, I only liked one character. And I <laughs> I love the ending because that is, you, you need to pay for what you've done. Mm -hmm. You destroyed the whole planet. You stole the plans. Did you not expect Darth Vader to come out and kill you? Like, it made sense. I don't want a spinoff of that one guy. You got out of all the characters, you got to pick the, the one bland, regular, Superman-looking <laughs> macho dude. I want the blind guy who uses the Force to help him. Jelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That yeah. was a great character. That was fun the... characters, but again, the whole movie, the message behind it, I, I do not agree with that. It's yeah, just bad. Just bad. <laughs> okay, so Pokemon news. It's Pokemon time. Okay, the uh, Secrets of the Jungle is now out on Netflix. We are halfway through it. It's fun. It is fun. I didn't think Zarude would talk. That's the weirdest part. <laughs> <laughs> I expected more Pokemon, like because we're in the jungle. Yeah. I kind of expected more, like like I guess crazier Pokemon, like Arbok and Parasect. Like, jungly Pokemon. Yeah. I said it's a lot of Galar Pokemon, which also makes sense. Because they're new. But and uh, he is a Galar Pokemon. And I think he's in the Galar region. He is. Right now. I saw, you know, whatever. I get it. <laughs> um, it's a fun movie so far. I'm enjoying it. So, after the raging success of Super Nintendo World of Japan's Universal Studios theme park, Woo! now recently announced a third expansion that will introduce Pokemon to the park by 2022. Hell yeah! It is not confirmed if Pokemon will just be walking around. Or if they're going to build all new attractions. I bet maybe a couple of new attractions. The uh, second expansion they announced a while ago is for Donkey Kong, which is its like own that makes thing sense. next to Mario. Nice. You'll get that in 2024. Get some nice banana flavored things. And then <laughs> uh, Orlando, Florida's Universal Studios will make their own version of the Super Nintendo World by 2025. Eh. I feel like it'd be more fun to just go to Japan, because it'll be done sooner, 
and then just also see other fun sites from Japan. Because you can also then go just a while down the way and get to the Pokemon Center. Yeah. And then there's, like, Tokyo Tower. And just, you know, it's, I think it's just be more worth it to go there than to wait for uh, Orlando. <laughs> I, I don't want to go to Florida. That's another thing. I, I don't just don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go to Florida. <laughs> never been. Never wanted to. No. No. Nah, nah. There's so many things that I don't want to be around. <laughs> just read the news and you'll know exactly why I don't want to go to Florida. It's just why like, I'm not going to what's, Texas. What's Florida man doing today? <laughs> yeah, what do Florida woman do now? <laughs> now, at the Orlando's Universal Studios, they finally announced the closing of Shrek 4D. Wow. It's been a while. It has been. Uh, I didn't see when the, the attraction opened, but I was wondering if they're getting rid of it to make room for, for Mario and Nintendo. Probably. Also, like, no one likes Shrek anymore. Like, it's fine. Shrek's a fine movie. Shrek 2 is definitely the best. But no one's talking about Shrek anymore. I'm like, no kid is in there going, Mommy, 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 I can't wait to see Shrek. <laughs> uh, Shrek Forever is so bad. It's super bad. I thought the third one was bad. Forever yeah. is bad. <laughs> Shrek 3 is pretty dumb. Uh, At least it had, like, it had some unique aspects. I like the fact that Camelot was a high school. That was nice. Justin Timberlake voiced Arthur, didn't he? Yeah, Justin Timberlake. Yeah, yeah. he's fine. He's fun. But four was bad. Was so I, I thought it was supposed to end with three. I thought that was the point of Shrek bringing in that prince. That was the idea. But it was then, supposed to end there. But then the corporate said one more. You have to do one and more. They, they and you have, can tell because everyone phones in their performances. They <laughs> have been asking for a Shrek 5 and a Puss in Boots 2. They have announced them, they have taken them away, they've re-announced them. Did you ever watch the Puss in Boots one? Yes, it's bad. It's super bad. I forgot that they were like in I, I feel Scout like we're just being negative towards everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's hard to not be negative when it's truly... It, they just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. that's like It really is just shilling out... Like, like crabbing out the most easiest, cheapest option. Yeah. And there was no thought or love or effort. When they were half-assing their Shrek movies, part of that team turned around and did How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah. That is an amazing That's one of the best. If it, it might be the best movie DreamWorks ever made. Yeah. How like, to Train Your Dragon. Without a doubt. It's uh, the so... second one is still just as good. It is. And the third one's kind of creepy. The third one can be. I I like but, the first one infinitely more than both of the sequels. Yeah. But for, like, you know, standard-wise... Yeah, no, I love the ending of 3. I even like, I thought it was really cute. Kung Fu Panda came out similarly yep. during that time. Fantastic. Those are fun. See, that's the thing. When you have, like, Kung Fu Panda and How to Tame Your Dragon next to Shrek 4, it's natural to be disappointed. Also, when Shrek 2 was so fun. Did you <laughs> Did you ever see the, the snail one, Turbo? This isn't Pokemon news. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Nothing really happened much with Pokemon except for Zerud. Yeah, sorry. And you can also get Zerud. Well, you could have got him in Go. I think that's over now. I think it finished, yeah. And you can get him uh, a downloadable, co downloadable copy for Sh Sword and Shield. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I never watched Turbo, by the way. Okay. I saw the ending on a TV screen in uh, Target one time. <laughs> I thought it was really good. I've, I've, I've heard it was fine. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk about Midnight Mass. This is going to be our last segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, these are spoilers, so if you have not seen it and you want to see it, go watch it. Yes. Seriously. Um, it's fun. It it's is only fun. eight hours. It, it's, yeah, it's real short, and it I, think it, I think it could have been longer. I think, yeah, two more episodes would have been nice. It's a really fun premise. So wait, wait hold on. Are we going to get into the spoilers now? Yeah, spoilers. Okay. Spoilers, it's happening. Spoilers, here we go. Really fun premise. Really fun cast. I think everyone did a great job with their performances. Mm -hmm. Especially the dude who is uh, Paul, Pastor Paul, yeah. Father Paul. Um, because he has to do, like, whole sermons <laughs> for some scenes. And that's not easy. But, uh, disappointing ending. No. Ah, okay, so what was... Uh, the whole father's intention to use this vampire. At the end, he he says his goal was mostly just that he wanted a second chance with his lover and his daughter. But and then he goes and's like, oh yeah, and everyone else too. So whole it really was just he wanted him to be young with her and their daughter. But 
he kind of spun it inside of himself as a, and then I'll help the whole island this Because way. it gets blown out of proportion. It and does. that one girl, the... Bev. Bev, yeah. The crazy one. <laughs> She's the one who really ruins that. She burns down the whole fucking town. Yeah. It's it's really a warning about over, like, zealots, basically. Yeah. And I think it's a an interesting concept, but, yeah, it just didn't end very well. It's no. kind of puttered away. And basically, everyone dies except for Angel, the vampire. He just flies off like, screen. He, he could have died, but he also could not he have. Could have found it, we, we don't see anything specific and implying then the, it. And <laughs> the two kids. Yeah, those two, they got away. And that, I, I don't know. It, if those were going to be our two survivors, I wish we would have spent more time with them. Because we spent a lot of time with, like, Riley and his girl. Yeah, so Riley's your main character at the beginning. And then when he becomes a vampire, he just, just he gives up. He just ran away. Yeah, he kills himself by the end of the episode. I and he fucking traumatizes her. I can't get over the fact, like yeah, Aaron Green. Yeah, he, he, stuck on a boat and watch him just disintegrate. Like, That's why horrifying. would you do that to her? That's so stupid. I I can't get over, like, you know, the story was fun. The characters are fun. Cinematography was impressive. But we had so many long, drawn-out monologues yep. from every... And I can't get over the fact... Oh, at the end, yeah, there's monologue after monologue. <laughs> it's, if it's not a monologue, it's them chanting a psalm for, like, five minutes. <laughs> it's, it's the fact that the one episode, we sit down, we point blank cameras straight at Riley, and we just slowly zoom in while he drones on about what he thinks about death. And then we just pivot the camera around and do the same exact thing with Erin as she drones on about what she thinks about this. And then we finish off the whole thing with another long fucking ten minute monologue about what they think about death again. And none of them is very creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he was inspired by multiple things, right? This is Mike Flanagan. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the inspirations. Stephen King is definitely one of them. Yeah, you can tell. But, yeah, the ending's so not there. It's just... It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. It wasn't very satisfying. There's no satisfying character conclusions or plot conclusions. It's just kind of, and then they die. Yeah. Oh, and when they're when Aaron gets attacked by Angel, mm -hmm. he's, like, ripping out her throat. And she's just stabbing his wing. That's something I thought was really stupid. Was and that, he just lets her do it. Like, and it, was, it happened earlier with the kids where they just, like, you know, they throw a rock at him. And he yeah, just, just kind of ignores. Eating. And then they fucking pour gasoline on him and lights him on fire. And then finally, like, that seems so stupid. Like, even if you're eating, you wouldn't just let a creature tear through your wings like that. That's not how, that's so contrived. Of a way to beat him. <laughs> so I think a missed story point, a plot there, is when, uh, what's the father's name? Paul. Paul? Yeah, Father Paul? Or the dad dad. Oh, no, no, Father Paul. Father Paul, and Mon uh, then dad. <laughs> Monsignor Pruitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was fun. That that was him. Yeah. I kind of figured it was. A good twist. It's um, kind of predictable. But when he finds the, the tomb, mm -hmm. right, that Angel's hiding in? Yeah. There should have been so much more expansion of why he's there. What is he hiding mm -hmm. from? Like, how long has he been there? Well, yeah. Also, that takes uh, inspiration from um, The Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. Because that's where they find that demon is out in the, the Holy Land. Well, that's the thing. We also never really find out if Angel was ever a demon or a vampire or even an angel or what. Well, he thinks he's an angel because of the wings. Yeah, which so technically the Bible never explains if it's bird-like or bat-like wings. Um, but, I don't, you know, it's a, it's a very unique way to go about it. Mm -hmm. And, but... Also, they never address vampire. No, they always just say angel. They never even imply vampire. No. They never even imply demon, either. No. It's either faith or not faith, basically. I'm surprised that when people saw him, they weren't freaking out. Yeah, I would have ran away. Yeah, I would have been like, that's not normal. Yeah. That you want to be praising that thing. I guess it was just, it really is the idea of basically religious delusions. Yeah. <laughs> that's one thing. It, I did like how 
there was always an excuse, some sort of reasoning. Oh, this thing, you're like, your skin is burning in the sunlight? Must be a reason for it. There must be a, a reason, and she had a fucking passage or a verse ready in her pocket every single time. We spent way too much. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> we spent way too much time with Bev and yeah. this religious bullshit. When we get to our real characters who are going to stop this, mm -hmm. it's a Muslim. Yes. It's uh, Aaron, who's just an individual. Yep, yep, yep. And then it's the... Uh, it's The lesbian doctor. Uh, Pruitt's daughter. Yeah. And they go about it, fighting it scientifically. Yes. They wanted to get to the mainland to show everyone. But then they, and then they die. Yeah, they all die. Yeah. And that's the thing. Bev was really our main antagonist. Yeah. But I don't think she got a... I, did, she, I didn't... I wasn't satisfied with her conclusion, with her death. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I, I mean... Like, I thought it was funny. She started digging a hole to bury herself. I did like how, in her desperation, get closer to hell, basically. Yeah. Dig down. Yeah. I just wanted more. It wasn't very satisfying. I, no. And, and endings where, and then they all die, are never very satisfying to begin with. But I don't know. I felt like we could have... Maybe an episode longer. Less monologuing. <laughs> the, the only explanation I've seen for the ending was uh, this article saying there's a sermon where uh, Pruitt says that we are Ash. Yeah. And on, we shall return to Ash. It was on Ash Wednesday when he was doing that. Yes. Yeah. And at the end, the whole town's burning and the ash starts falling. Mm-hmm. So that was as close as I got. But it just seems like... I don't know. Like, I get it, but... It was like a suicide pact. I don't know. And then what do the kids end up doing in the end? The one, the two who got away. They just sat there on that boat. And the very last line of the whole show You'd think was, the Coast Guard would show up after that. After a while, yeah. When it's like, hey, there's a literal gigantic yeah, fire. Yeah, this island's <laughs> on fire. There's two kids on a boat. And one of the last things was that one girl, She was the last line of dialogue of the whole show was her going, I can't feel my legs. So it's implied that the medicine medicinal properties of get that let her walk again are gone maybe maybe angel did die maybe well okay it's, it's, to <laughs> to talk about a better doing of vampires mm -hmm. what we do in the shadows so good <laughs> <laughs> and last week's episode was about how they can't kill the sire or uh the, the baron, baron yeah because they're attached to them. Yeah. Once they die, they die too. Yes. And that's an old concept with vampires. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's what he was trying to imply there. Maybe. I wish it was just less obtuse, if that's the case. It like, is. Maybe a, see a years later type of thing of like the the two kids growing up being like, hey, wasn't that bananas or whatever. <laughs> so another weird thing that goes along with vampires, the garlic. Mm -hmm. That's never prevalent. Nope. And holy things. The cross, but he's just hanging out in a church. Yeah, inside the church. God doesn't seem to bother him. So that's why I was like, I don't really know if it was something demonic, was he a vampire, or an actual angel. Yeah, I don't know. They could have been right the whole time, and that could have been an angel. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think keeping it open ended was a bit of a mistake. I mean, I guess we're still talking about it. <laughs> so if that was their intention, they've succeeded. Yeah, but I thought Bly was such a stronger story. So much better. I'm excited for these next things from Mike Flanagan. He is still good at his storytelling and his his different, uh, like, series. And there has to be a worst one, you know? There's always going to be a worst one. And if this is going to be it, then that's fine. It, at least it was unique and entertaining for what it was. Well, he, he got another job because of it. He's yeah. going to do the Fall of the House of Usher. Mm -hmm. and this uh, he still does... Uh, theatrical movies mm -hmm. um yeah this one was a little let down but interesting concept here and there yes definitely if you're interested in um making movies or cinematography or directing in any way watch this one because the camera work is very impressive no especially in that second episode yeah he's always had fun with his camera mm -hmm. one thing to really point out even though it's kind of a lackluster ending it's still better than Twilight. <laughs> okay, it's it's still for being horror. It's still better than Bloomhouse. Oh, oh. Which we were doing the math. Bloomhouse 
has uh, Halloween kills. Yep. Oh, check out Ghost Hunter's Moon. Hunter's Moon. Oh my god. It's so good. That's going to be the best part of this movie. <laughs> if, if you don't even like rock, check it out because it's so good. It's, really it's just a good song. We like Ghost a lot. The we band. Love Ghost. Ghost is so good. Um, So he's got Halloween kills. It's getting terrible reviews. Oof. Uh, at the end of this month, just before Halloween, is uh, somehow they squeeze this in there, but Paranormal Activity is coming back for a seventh installment. Really? Those were never really scary. Why people it's do such an old people concept. didn't like them after the third one? Yeah. Like why? Why seven? Yeah. What was the, what was the thing? Like we figured out that Bloomhouse was making like seven movies. Yeah. So then this month, on top of all that, they have four movies coming straight to Prime. Like. That's how. There's no way one production company can make that many movies in one month and have them all be of equal quality. Yeah. And Bloomhouse doesn't have a great track record with its quality. <laughs> this this channel started with Bloomhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always wondered if we should go back and revisit. I don't know. That's That sounds so exhausting. That sounds it, like such a chore. <laughs> we never got to They Come Knocking. No. Nah. And that was our favorite one. Yeah. But uh, if you guys want to like, see that, just tell me. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it. We'll bring back garbage eggs if you want. <laughs> well, garbage eggs will come back. Yeah. This was essential. This last, like, I don't know, 10 minutes has been essentially garbage eggs. Discussing yeah, midnight just going back. And <laughs> what we're saying, what I'm trying to make the comparison is that Mike Flanagan's horror is actually really well thought out. Yes. And it's not your typical horror. When it's, you think horror, you think screaming it's and real, blood. It's real That's in there. thought heavy. It's, a lot of, it's, a, it's almost like a puzzle, yeah. basically. And that adds to the horror aspects. One of the greatest things about Bly Manor is, is uh, what's his name? Riley the ghost? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> <clears throat> He's stuck. As a ghost, he didn't yeah. want to die. He was murdered. Yes. And he wants to come back and by in, uh, going into the little boy's body. Mm -hmm. That sounded weird. That, yeah, it, uh, possessing but, him, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but every time he's trying to do that, it, the door is knocking. Yeah. And it's his mom harassing yeah. him. It's and so. It's the past coming back, and that's his own personal hell. And so it's a thought of what death is actually like. It's the thing where, with, that's, a, that's the biggest thing. I could re-watch Bly Manor over and over again to try to catch all the little hint things. Yeah. I would not be compelled to watch Midnight Mass again. No. Because there was nothing, despite being a good, like, thought concept, there was no big twists or turns or revelations. It was just kind of, and then here's the answer. <laughs> a lot of those characters in Midnight Mass are just bad people. They are. And that's, that was sort of the point, also, where I guess like, if they're bad enough, you won't mind if they all die in a big fire at the end. But, I don't know. I think it could have been stronger. Uh, literally, all the good guys get murdered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Because <laughs> Riley was not a good guy. He got drunk and killed someone. Yeah. The, the, I feel like we could have played with that concept more. The idea of being a sinner in the I, eyes of God. I thought it was creepy because every time he lays down, he sees her. Yeah. And then he asks her uh, towards the end of his time there. Yep. He goes, how was your day? And she was... And then he smiles. And it's just like, oh, like the that, fact that he's learning to deal with it. That trauma. But, and that's the trauma that, like, that's true horror. See, that's the thing. That's, like... That's scarier than I some think, axe murder. I think it would have been more interesting if, you know, he's, he was, like, looked down upon by the church because he accidentally killed somebody in a drunk driving accident. Mm -hmm. But then by the end, Bev was actively shooting people. I would love to see it when like, there, there would have been that shift of people going like, no, you're doing the same thing, but you're worse. It's justified for you, but you're so snide towards him. I wanted her to get her comeuppance. You know, it was obviously poisoned, that dog. I wanted her to get her comeuppance about all the evil she was doing. Yeah. And I don't think it was ever really delivered. Um, God, now that I'm thinking about it, the conversations with Riley and Father Paul... Mm -hmm. He really does just kind of just tell Riley, and Riley just accepts that this is Mon Monsignor Pruitt. Mm -hmm. Because he starts asking him about the mop, the mouse, right? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. there's the story about a mouse that they try to save, and he goes, I replaced the mouse. And never directly says that he is Monsignor Pruitt. But he kind of figures that out. Riley just kind of accepts it, too. Yeah. No, no, no. Bye, I don't know. 
Unless I got that wrong. No, you're right. I just... I wish it would have been more. There's some moments where it's like, oh, we could pop this off right now, and it never does. And when it does, it's just fire. Yeah. Uh, It could have been more. Just some tweaking, I think, is what the story needed. Hmm. Are we wrapping up now? Yeah, we're done. That was it. That that might be our longest coffee break yet. I don't think so, but... um, I hope you guys like the new format. Yeah, we're I wanted to hit all the bullet points and then talk about stuff. Constantly trying new things. Would love to hear any of your guys' thoughts and opinions about any of the many topics we touched on here. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>